I just want to do a quick video on air conditioner capacitors and why you probably want to order one now even if your AC is already working fine. By the way, you should know that in here there's 240 volts. That's definitely enough to kill you, so be careful, know what you're doing. So on my air conditioner, you can see that the power line comes out of the house right here and goes up right into there, and so that's where the capacitor is located behind this metal housing. You just take off a couple screws, take off the panel, and you're right in there. Now in this video, we're not going to replace the capacitor. I'm just gonna show you some details about it that you're gonna to need to know when you're trying to order a new one. Now this is some serious voltage there. That's 240 volts. That'll really mess you up or kill you. So please, 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 please know what you're doing before you get into that. So signs of a bad capacitor, if your fan's not spinning, if this fan's not really going, that's a sign of a bad capacitor. If your compressor down there is making a funny noise, that's another sign of a bad capacitor. If it's having a hard time spinning, it's a sign of a bad capacitor. Um, and there's also a visual sign of a bad capacitor. So right away without any electrical equipment, you can tell which one's good and which one's bad. How do I know? <laughs> well, this one's wobbling around. This one's not. This is brand new, so I know it's good. But if you look at the top of this, you see how it's kind of domed? It's puffy. Can you tell on camera? Look at, the, look at the top of this, flat. Look at the top of this, domed. Even the bottom, you know, it's hard to tell, but it is domed. That's why it's spinning like that. So when these go bad, they, you know, small ones will just explode and leak inside in electronics. These usually don't explode, but they're gonna get real puffy. So if you see the top of your capacitor domed, time to get a new one, even if it works, just order a new one and you'll save yourself a lot of pain on a hot day. So I have this one on hand just because one day the capacitor in this AC is most likely going to go out and I don't want to wait for a repairman or an online order to come fix it. You know, when it's really hot outside, you just want it to work right now. And so it's, these are cheap, about 20 bucks at the most. And you just keep it in your basement or whatever, just have one on hand. So that's why I got one. So before you disconnect your old capacitor, make sure you know which wires were plugged into what. Now there's just three ports, even though there's several prongs on each port. It doesn't matter if it was this one or this one or this one, okay? This is one, two, and three. That's it. There's, there's no difference between this one and this one, all right? But there is a big difference between this one, this one, and this one. Each one of these do totally different things. So you can't see it on the top of here because it's super rusty. But if you wipe the dust, you're going to see some writing. Let's look at this one. You can see it. this one has one, two, three, four prongs. And you can see the little C. And that stands for common, not compressor. Okay. Next to that is going to be the three prong. And that one always is the Herm. Herm is the compressor, all right? This wire is gonna hook up to the compressor. Then you're gonna have the last one, and uh, this one just has one prong. Sometimes there's two, but this last one with the least amount of prongs is gonna go to the fan, and it's stamped fan there, okay? So make sure that the wires you unplugged, you know, whatever color it is, you know, okay, this is the fan. So write down on a piece of paper, fan orange, or whatever it is, and then you're gonna know that the orange wire goes on the fan plug there. So let's talk about this little sticker here and what it means. You're going to see part numbers. You're going to see brand names. Um, don't worry so much about the part number because good luck finding this exact model and brand of capacitor. You might, but it might be a little bit hard, but it's not really important. What you need to know, you see this 60 UF. That stands for 60 microfarad, and then it has another number that's important, 7.5 UF, and that's super common for um, AC capacitors, air conditioner capacitors, and then 370 VAC. Those three things are important, and so let's talk about that. So this capacitor is known as a dual run capacitor, and that's because it runs two things. Remember, your fan and the compressor. And so the compressor, is the 60 microfarad, and sometimes it's written like that, or it might be UF, 
Okay, and then remember the other number was 7.5 MFD, and that was a fan, it could be 7.5 microfarad like that. And now the thing runs, remember, on 370 volts. Now your capacitor might say 440 volts. So will a 370 work in a 440? Totally not. Don't hook up a 370 if yours requires a 440. But you can use a 440 on a 370, okay? This is the minimum voltage that it can run on. If you have a capacitor that works uh, in a higher voltage, you can use that here, all right? So I hope that makes sense. Now let's take a look at this capacitor that I found online. You can see it's 60 plus 7.5 microfarad. So that's a total match. Here you can see it runs on a 440 or a 370 volts AC. Just in case you're interested, I'll tell you how to test one of these. You can see it says plus or minus 5%. That means that that's the tolerance, that's the range that's uh, within a good range for this capacitor. So let's check the capacitance. I had to come inside because I was running out of daylight. I'm gonna move it over here, on my voltmeter to capacitance. Now, a lot of these don't have this test, but this one does. And uh, there we go. So I'm gonna put one lead here on common. And let's test the compressor. Remember that was 60, right? 60 microfarad. Now look at, oh, nothing. I guess it must be bad. Now you gotta wait a bit. 17, hold on, hold on. It's kind of charging up. 59.9. So tiny, a tenth less than uh, 60. But remember the tolerance was what? 6% plus or minus 6 or 5%? Uh, 5%, so that's well within range, so that's totally good. Let's test this one, fan. So we're gonna keep this one on common. Take the other lead, put it on fan. Now remember it was 7.5. Look at that, 7.56. So this is a perfectly good capacitor. Um, in case you're curious, let's test this dead one. Uh, there it is, the four prong is common. And we'll do the compressor again. Let's see what we get. Let's wait for it and waiting, and waiting. And we're gonna wait forever because this one's totally, totally bad. But I'm surprised nothing's happened. Oh, there, <laughs> there we go. It went up, what, 0 0.01. So this is totally bad, which I already know. And that's about it. So we'll do another video later on how to make sure you can safely change one of these. You wanna shut down the power at the breaker, um, at that box by the compressor itself, and then you still want to test the voltages on the um, uh, on the leads coming into the air conditioner outside to make sure there still is no voltage because it's just not worth making a mistake. By the way, if you want to discharge one of these things, because these can still hold, capacitors can be dangerous because they can hold a charge, kind of like a battery. So what you do is you short it. So you get a screwdriver and make sure there's a good distance between the metal and your hand. So it's gotta be kind of insulated. And you're gonna to touch the two, bridge it. You're just gonna short it. So bridge the common to the fan, and it might make a little pop. And then this one here, common to the herm or compressor there. And it will just short the electricity. There'll be an electric charge going back and forth if there is one. And then it'll be safe to handle, okay? And then you can take off the wires and take it out of your, air conditioner. So be safe guys. If you have any questions, let me know. I will do my best to answer. As always, have an awesome day.